notion somehow that that um, to be a dude, um, to be worthwhile of 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 being a member of your gender, you have to be. You have to have a girlfriend. You have to have these things. You have to have, and that also carries that weight of the ideal ego. And I've encountered a number of patients I've worked with who. Uh, we we call um, in the shrink biz causing the cause when the very thing that you are afraid of happening the things that you do to keep it from happening cause it to happen right I mean literally it's a and so the idea of um, um, I can think of a uh, patient I worked with a, few, a while back who desperately wanted a girlfriend and would talk about all the ways in which you know you know there are all these men that seem less attractive than he was had less didn't have the success he had, but they always had girlfriends and he didn't. But when you begin to talk about how he would approach a woman, Uh-oh. he would approach them with an air of either um, truly remarkable desperation okay. uh, or uh, the opposite. Um, and approach them in such a way that he was signaling to them that they were a thing he needed, sort of like he were buying rims for his car. Right. right, right, and right. either one of those send a message to the individual you're approaching that, man, this is probably not somebody this I should is, be. Yeah, I yeah should that's be. a immediate turnoff for a lot of people, <laughs> and he needs something in the middle between those two. Maybe needs, we can you know, find another approach. You know, I mean, he, you know, he, he, we, we would say in the in my end of the biz that if he were to approach them as a whole object. With some right. genuine interest in maybe this is someone who I might want to just hang out with for at least an hour and find out who they are. Right. Maybe that would uh, that would be that would be nice, <laughs> you know, as opposed to you know either one of those uh, had uh, and, and I think I think to a degree he was he was trapped by this this ideal ego this notion that there's a thing that he has to be, and he is constantly falling short of it, and I think to a degree that that is the the mixture of. You know, if you think of um, um, part of the incel manifestos that are that are would be considered toxic, there's this notion that women, and they'll often recur, they'll use the word females, they'll say females are, and okay. so they make these broad generalizations about the opposite sex using a term that already carries weight as if they're, are you've already right. part objectified someone and it's made them a... the way you say the yeah, word. It's in, in, female. In it's yes, like, oh, right. yeah. it's already got a, it's already got, there's already sort of a, it's like you've rang the misogynistic bell already. Ding! It's, it's there. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> with the way they say it. And um, uh, their approach is, has such a mixture of envy and anger and uh, underneath that is disowned shame. It's being driven, I think, by this, by somehow that there are people out there in the world, other men less than them who have more than them, and these women choose them, and so it, it creates this this toxin, this swirl of of of, and it's driven by envy and jealousy and you well, know, all and, the wrong reasons. Right? Yeah. 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 It's um. Yeah. Which is yeah. an aside. I, I I was listening to a, a podcast and they were talking about the difference between envy and jealousy, and I and I often find that it's difficult to tease those two apart. But right. uh, I think jealousy is wanting the thing that someone has, and envy is not wanting the person to have the fun that you're not having. Okay. And there's a difference between those two points, and right. one of them is more toxic. Like with sure. jealousy, you could say, "Man, I wish I had that boat." Right. You know, and right. then maybe you you know you get an extra job at you know the Cracker Barrel, okay. <laughs> and you save up money, and then you, you get a dinghy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, that's uh, right. I'm more as in the world of boats, I'm a dinghy. Okay, but um, could say a joke there, but I'm gonna leave it alone. Right <laughs> yeah, this there. is that's good. That was okay. good. <laughs> but uh, um, Indy, however, is has has a touch. Uh, Melanie Klein says that the 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 um, uh, the main root of evil is envy. It is knowing that someone has the good and as opposed to trying to give the good to yourself or maybe even some admiration and gratitude that good exists, you simply want it destroyed. Wow. All right. Wow, you don't want to own it. You just want to take it out. I want the, right. you know, I, the world. I am not happy and you have this thing, so I will take it from your hand and I will destroy it. And in some right. ways, when we see some of the manifesto of some of the school shooters we've seen, there's an element of that in it. Right. To go mm-hmm. in and uh, to um, to kill the chads and uh, what do they call the the women? The men were called chads. That hmm. was uh, one of the one of the school shooters. Um, 
the the guy who shot up the sorority. I can't think of his name and his in some of the videos that he has online that you right. can watch. He talks about that. And there's this this um, it's uh, narcissistic wounds, a feeling of entitlement, and just a, a, a string of toxic envy. Right. Yeah.